due to the lack of alternative propulsion concepts and their advantageous power to weight ratio for an output power of around 250 kW and larger. Small turboshaft engines are nearly the unique power source for helicopters with above 2 to MTOW. To realize a compact layout of the whole propulsion system in small helicopters, the engines are mostly mounted in the upper part of the fuse late, next to the main gearbox and the rotor. In this video, we are going to discuss understanding helicopter's engine, turboshaft. The video is going to be amazing, so make sure you stick to the end. But before starting the video, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe to never miss out on any of our videos. Therefore, helicopters can lift more weight with the assistance of smaller, lightweight gas turbine engines that supply more power for their size compared to piston engines. A number of passengers, cargo, and fuel can be carried. The primary difference between the turboshaft and the turbojet is that an additional power section consisting of turbines and an output shaft has been incorporated into the design. In most cases, the power turbine is not mechanically linked to the gas generator, which is referred to as a free power turbine allows the speed of the power turbine to be optimized for the machinery that it will energize without the need for an additional reduction gearbox within the engine. The power turbine extracts almost all of the energy from the exhaust stream and transmits it via the output shaft to the machinery it is intended to drive. A rating is a power the engine will develop when it is run at the limiting speed at ISA standard day conditions. Limitations are those prescribed limits put on the engine by the manufacturer to permit continued operation and longer life. Occasionally, a torque limitation will appear that coincidentally equals the rating of the engine. Most limitations are designed with normal use in mind and err on the side of safety, with some provisions made for inadvertent excursions beyond this level. An unusual example of the turboshaft principle is the Pratt & Whitney F-135 PW600 turbofan engine for the Stavel F-35B. In the conventional mode, it operates as a turbofan but when powering the lift fan, it switches partially to turboshaft mode to send 29,000 horsepower forward through a shaft and partially to turbofan mode to continue to send thrust to the main engine's fan and rear nozzle. Large helicopters use two or three turboshaft engines. Mil Mi 26 uses two Lotarev D136 at 11,400 HP each while the Sikorsky CH-53E Super Stallion uses three General Electric T-64 at 4,380 HP each. A recent trend in turboprop design has been the evolution of propellers for efficient operation at transonic flight speeds, much higher than previously achieved, up to mass numbers of 0.85. This usually involves a higher disc loading, i.e. a higher discharge of velocity from the propeller in order to permit the use of a smaller diameter propeller. This trend has been accompanied by an increase in the number of blades in the propeller from 6 to 12 instead of the more common 2 to 4 blades in lower speed propellers. The blades are scimitar shaped with swept back leading edges at the blade tips to accommodate the large mass numbers encountered by the propeller tip at high rotative and flight speeds. Such high speed propulsors are also called prop fans. Although this design significantly reduces the ingestion of foreign objects into the engine, it is important for pilots to be aware of how much debris is actually being filtered. Operating in the sand, dust, or even in grassy type materials can choke an engine in just minutes. Pressed air is directed to the combustion section through discharge tubes where atomized fuel is injected into it. The fuel to air mixture is ignited and allowed to expand. The combustion gas is then forced through a series of turbine wheels to provide power to both the engine compressor and the accessory gearbox. Depending on the model and manufacturer, the RPM can vary from 20,000 to 51,600. 
A turbojet engine does not generate a lot of hot air, so it is not considered an air-breathing engine. As the air is compressed by a rotating compressor at the back of the combustion chamber, it is transported quickly. A very common application for turboshaft engines is in automobiles with sustained long-term high power output and high reliability, small sizes, low weight, and high performance. Since the model is based on data of an engine, several fundamental performance values for a varying power setting are compared between three sets of data. The TMATS model, the engine deck, a performance model provided by the engine manufacturer, and values from engine testing. It's not easy to accurately measure temperatures deep within the inferno of the engine, and as accurate as the cockpit indications are, they are really only approximate. The temperature indicated is really only a guess happening to the metal, and it is for this reason that there are transient limits of temperature, particularly for starting. Most helicopter pilots operating from the same location see only the effect of the air temperature, an altimeter setting changes won't make that much difference to pressure altitude. They know they have less power available on hotter days, or the TOT is higher on a hot day than on a cold day for the same torque used. The natural tendency is to blame the change on density altitude. Let us know your opinion in the comment section below. This was all for today. Hope you liked the video. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay safe and we will be back soon with another video.